Hey, welcome back. And this week, no camping. This week, we're actually gonna be headed to Scottsdale to hang out with the same friends that I went camping in Sedona with. But this time, I'm just gonna hang out this weekend uh, in the Scottsdale area. Just got a hotel down there and uh, about 10 minutes from their place. And they're gonna have a little pool party tomorrow. Yeah, just kind of hang out and relax for the weekend. The hotel I'm at has laundry, so that's good. So I'm gonna do a little bit of laundry, relax and enjoy myself. So. That's, uh, that's it, but I will be uh, obviously road tripping there in the Tesla. And so we got about, I think probably about a five hour drive with, uh, I don't know, you throw in an hour there of charging. It's probably not gonna be that much, but right now we have, uh, let's see here, 56% and we're headed first to White Hills, Arizona. It says we'll have about 27% when we get there. Uh, again, probably more like 15 to 17 in that range. Uh, but we'll see. It says 27. I say 15. We'll see what it is when we get to White Hills. Again, got the cargo box on top that I've said a million times. So you're going to take off 25% right off the bat just with the cargo box alone. So um, yeah, we'll see what, how much we got when we get to White Hills. And that's a 250 kilowatt charger. Been there a couple times now. And we will charge up and then on to the greater Phoenix area or Scottsdale. So I will uh, see you at the next charger. to the White Hills Arizona Supercharger on the right. Now turn right onto West White Hills Road. And this car is completely stopped and I have no idea why. I guess he can't turn. All right, yeah, we've been here a couple times before. 250 kilowatts. Now you have arrived at your destination. So should be fairly quick here. All right, so here at the White Hills Arizona Supercharger on the way to the Phoenix area or Scottsdale. Uh, as you can see, it's a 250 kilowatt charger. We've been here a couple times, I think. Uh, we definitely stopped here at least on the way to Sedona, if not also on the way back. Um, and I've been here a couple other times besides that. So yeah, almost all the way up to full charger. And I have 22%. Um, I think I had like 20 when I got here. It said I was gonna have like 27. I said like 15 or 16, something like that. Uh, so right in the middle. But yeah, as you can see here, it says 50 minutes to 100%. As I've said many times before, never probably gonna go to 100%. It just doesn't make sense. It's, uh, it takes too long once it get, once the charge gets above, I'd say probably 85%, then it really slows down. So best is just to go to around 80, 85 and then take off and get to the next place. For the limit, it's set to trip. You can set it to any of these. You can also use the app to do that, but I have it set to 100%, so it'll go as much as I want it to. And then also, uh, shout out to one of the viewers who commented about using the energy uh, screen on here. So go down here. Instead of just seeing the charging screen, go to the energy screen to see a more 
real life projection of what you're gonna get. The average watt hour per mile is 416, which is I think fairly poor. And that's, um, I think you wanna have probably like the high 200s, low 300s from what I've seen. And so this is looking at the last 30 miles average range. It's you know saying right now they'll have a range of 54 miles with 29%. And so this is apparently supposed to be the more real world actual projection of what you're gonna get versus the percentage, which does help, or more importantly, the, the mileage. If I switch this over to mileage, if I go to display and switch that over to distance, you can show it shows 99 miles, but in reality, that's not true. If I go back to the energy page, so it shows 101 miles, but my actual range because of the cargo box and what I've been getting for the last 30 miles is actually around 59 miles. So this is probably more what I should be looking at. And I think going in the future, this is what the page that I'll be looking at. Now, if you're going through mountains, that's gonna be skewed because you're gonna have like, for instance, when I was coming down the mountain from Mount Charleston, uh, I actually gained five or 6% on the way down. And so that's not gonna be, you know, a real world look at what it's actually gonna be. But when you're out here and it's, you know, pretty f flat for the most part, that's gonna be more of what we're gonna get. And that's kind of what we just went through. So uh, I'll keep an eye on this going forward a little bit more and uh, and not this, because that's not real world. It is a little bit closer. Obviously, if I didn't have the roof rack and cargo box, that would be a little more true. Um, I think without it, I was getting probably around 290 miles per charge, you know, on a full charge. And with it, I'm probably getting around 225 to 240, but that hasn't completely updated. Again, we need to be watching this and see what this is. And so I'll probably go up to around, like I said, around 85%. We'll see what that projected range is. Our next stop is probably gonna be either Kingman or this one in Wickenburg, Arizona. That one is 150 kilowatts, so that, that should work. That's 155 miles away. If we get a pretty much a full charge, it would be, you know, we should be able to do that. And otherwise, uh, like I said, I'll stop in Kingman and just get a little charge there. But we'll see, I'll keep you updated before I take off. All right, if you wanna see what the White Hills Arizona Supercharger looks like, kinda of see over here, set in the middle of the mountains here. Got a subway and a shell gas station and looks like eight stalls. to take your dog out, a little fake grass area. Otherwise, right off of 93 right here. By the way, if you don't have one of these, you're missing out. If you're taking any type of road trip consistently or business traveler or something like that, get one of these. They're like, I don't know, 10 or 15 bucks at most on Amazon. I'll link the one that I got below. And uh, yeah, I use it you know, on the road all the time whenever I'm eating. You can see just Pops right on to the steering wheel right here, and then just comes off, and right back on. So, pretty nice, but yeah, like I said, I'll link it below along with anything else that I use on my uh, travel. Right, so, another update here. So it says I have 25 minutes remaining to get to 100%. As you can see, I already have 85%. So to give you a little idea about that charging curve, it's gonna take 25 minutes to get that last 15%, but it's only taken about 20 minutes to get from what it was at about 20% up to 85. So it's really that last 15% that takes a long time. So if you can keep it to around 85%, now I'm gonna to try to go a little, I'm gonna to try to charge a little bit more simply because remember I needed to get 155 to get to that, uh, that other supercharger and I think it was like Wickenburg or something. I, so I want to see, make sure that I can get there. And so I'm looking at the actual consumption or energy efficiency based on the last 30 miles of driving. And right now it has me at 159. And so I'm, I got to make it 155. That's a little too close for comfort. For, so I'll sit around for another 10 minutes or so and get that up to like, you know, low 90s, 95, somewhere around there. And then I'll take off. 
So we wanna get this projected range, which again is based on the last 30 miles. We wanna get that up to somewhere maybe around 175, 180 if possible before taking off. That'll give us a little peace of mind that we're gonna get there with no problem. So again, 162, we'll kick it up to about 175, 180, and then we'll take off. All right, so stayed about 10 more minutes, 94%. And as you can see here, it shows a projected range of 175 miles. We need 155, so that should be plenty. And uh, I'm going to stick around for, I don't know, a couple more minutes and then take off and update you when we get to Wickenburg. All right, let's disconnect and take off for Wickenburg. Also, that charge was $18.27 from 20% to 95%. All right, so to give you an idea of cost of charging up compared to gas, so gas right now is like $3.50, somewhere around $3.50 a gallon. And here, uh, I went from 20% to 95%, and it cost me $18.27. That actually seems a little bit higher than normal too, but it could be by the location, but still compared to if I filled up a gas car, uh, that'd probably be my last car, that'd probably be, I don't know, maybe around $35, $40 maybe here, only $18, so not bad. All right, so as I'm getting ready to take off for Wickenburg, as you can see, it now shows I would have 22% when I arrive, I have 95% now. So we'll see again how accurate that is. So first I just want to show, so they're all full here in Kingman. That's right, not Wickenburg. I chickened out. <laughs> I'll tell you why in a minute, but yeah, they're all full. So I got to wait a few minutes until one opens up and then it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stalls, all 10 are taken. So I will update you here in a second on what happened. All right, so I'm going to put in here, okay, there's Wickenburg, 113 miles. See how much it says if we would have just kept going to get there. All right, now it shows 21%. Previously, it went down from like 20 down to 17, and I didn't think I would have enough. It says 129 miles, and if I go to energy, now it shows 135. That was down to 127 like 10 minutes ago. So I was like, oh, it was getting too close. And I was like, I need like 140, it's down to 127. Uh, so I started getting a little worried, and I was like, you know what, there's a, you know, the Kingman, Arizona superchargers like 10 minutes away. I'll just charge there. I'll do it for 10 minutes and then we'll go. It's like a 120 kilowatt charger. And as you can see, I'm not even getting anything. I'm only getting like 17 kilowatts and it says an hour and 10 to charge. Obviously not staying anywhere near that, staying about 10 minutes. I have 68%, probably could have made it now that I look at the map because it shows Wickenburg, I'd have 20% now but it was getting down to 17 right before I got here and then it kept dropping and I was like, and then I looked at that energy thing and it was only showing like 127, now it shows 133, but um, so it shows 133 miles right now and I have 129 to go. So I was a little worried and I saw mountains coming up and that's what kind of freaked me out. And I was like, uh, one last chance to stop at Kingman. So I was like, all right, well, I'll just stop. And of course, all 10 stalls were full, but I only had to wait about four or five minutes. And so I'm only gonna charge here for a very short time. It is, as you can see, only at 17 kilowatts. That's nothing that's like so slow, it's absurd. But I'll stay here until this gets at 69% now. I'll wait till it's probably at like 75% and then I'll take off. Yeah, now it shows 26% to Wickenburg, so that should be plenty. The other thing besides the mountains coming up that kind of freaked me out was that it's so hot. Right now it's only showing 109 out. It was just showing 114 when I got here. So, uh, but it's it's around 110, 112 degrees. And that, you know, uses extra energy as it's kicking out uh, air conditioning. So I kind of decided that, you know, between the mountains coming up and the air conditioning, 
whatever the you know it's two minutes off the road might as well just stop at uh, kingman and charge up so yeah again now it shows 26 percent instead of 20 percent i should have plenty now to get on to wickenburg and that's the last stop before i get to the phoenix area so i will check in with you at the next one all right so i don't know maybe 40 minutes ago when i stopped at the last kingman charger it showed like 133 or something like that range well it's still showing like 130 range so maybe this isn't the best thing to look at i don't understand if it shows if i have a 130 mile range but i just drove 45 minutes and i still have 130 mile range i'm not understanding this then i mean i know it's supposed to because this should show its true range based on the last 30 miles and so i'm unclear then how this works so if anybody knows in the comments below, please let me know. I'm trying to understand a little bit more so I can try to get a little better grasp of, of my uh, actual mileage with the cargo box on top. But this doesn't seem to be working very well. So, cause it shows, yeah, 120, 28. It showed 127 like 45 minutes ago. And I have 92 miles left, so I'll have plenty. It shows, yeah, I'll have 11%. So it did show about 20% at the uh when i was at the kingman charge when i first got there it showed i'd have 20 percent when i left it said i'd have 26 when i got to wickenburg clearly i'm gonna only have a few percent when i get there so depending on the mountains and the heat and all that stuff 91 miles left says i'll have 11 percent when i get there so it should be fine well i have 40 miles left to the wickenburg supercharger and it says we will have 7%. So I'm glad that I stopped at, at Kingman because remember it said I was, I would have 20, 21%. Now it's showing seven. And so the hills, the heat, the air conditioner running full blast, like all that, that's taking a toll on the, on the range. And of course the cargo boxes I've said 10,000 times. So yeah, I think, uh, I think I made the right decision by stopping in Kingman. It would have been really tight. I would have had some major range anxiety at this point if I wouldn't have stopped. I just stopped for like 10, 15 minute stops, but that was enough that got me to 75%. I currently have 28% and it says that I currently will have 7% when I get there. I bet you it's even a little lower than that. I'm gonna say 4%. So we'll see, should be there in, let's see, uh, about 35 minutes. I'll update you as soon as I get there. All right, getting here to the Wickenburg supercharger. I believe it's a 150 kilowatt charger. And boy, am I glad that we chose to stop at Kingman. I'll show you why in just a minute. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto East Garcia Street. Then your destination will be on the right. All right, coming in here to, I guess, Wickenburg. <laughs> Tiny little town. Turn left onto East Garcia. Yeah, I turned on the I turned a little too early into the parking lot. And it's actually I should have turned on the street right there and then it's just here on the left. Uh, boy am i glad that we stopped in kingman because we are down to five percent and as you can see here the uh the very low battery warning is up so i'll hit that and i will go charge right now and we'll probably charge up to around 80 percent or so i'll know a little bit more the next stop should be the phoenix scottsdale area so we will find out here in a second on the way in it kept showing yeah so now i have 13 miles left on the way in, it kept showing that I would have enough, but then it kept the percentage kept going down. Remember, it was at 20% at the last charger, and then I stayed there for about 10 minutes, uh, which I'm glad I did at Kingman, and, and I'm glad I stopped there uh, because I might not have had enough, or it would have been very close. It probably would have made it, but very, very close. I would have been down to like 0% probably. 
all ready to get charged up and I guess with the cargo box airing on the side of caution is probably always the best choice. All right, so charging up here in Wickenburg, you can see it's going up. We're only at 29 kilowatts. Uh, hopefully that goes up here. The person that's on the right, very attractive young lady. <laughs> uh, no, she just charged too. She's on 2A. What am I on? Ah. I'm going to move spots. Because I'm on the same. If you're on the 150 kilowatt or less chargers, you end up splitting if you end up on the same one. We're currently... Oh, never mind. She's done. So don't have to move. But yeah, so now, yeah, I guess we're up to 66. So here's a little tip if you pull into a charger. If it's 150 kilowatt or less on Tesla's network, you'll end up splitting with somebody else that's on the same number. So you want to make sure that you're not, if, if somebody's on 1A, like the person to the right of me is, I don't want to be on any of the number ones. I want to move to a number two if possible. That's just a little tip that will help keep everybody charging the fastest as possible and onto their next destination. All right, so we're here in Wickenburg, which by the way, is this tiny little southwestern town here in Arizona. Um, I just saw a lady write a check at the grocery store in front of me. I haven't seen that in like 15, 20 years. Um, so that was interesting. And then as I came out, the guy there was a guy out here in a pickup truck asking me about the Tesla. It's funny because the last four times somebody's stop me to ask me questions it's four burly dudes in pickup trucks and they're always like we're i'm interested in getting one and they're always asking questions about it and stuff it's, i always found that kind of interesting but uh super cool nice guy and he was just asking about it and said he they must have put this in not too long ago because he's like yeah we don't see too many teslas in this small town but uh they have a little 150 kilowatt thing looks like about eight chargers here anyways i am headed to the next one which is, uh, I was looking, there's not a, there's no like 250 kilowatt chargers around Phoenix. Like I didn't see any, none of these are 250 kilowatt. So I'm gonna have to look again when I get to the hotel, but uh, I'm going to Scottsdale anyways. So this one is the one I'm going to. It's North Scottsdale, uh, Kierlin Boulevard. It says I'll have 48% when I get there. So I'm actually gonna take off here when it gets to, when that gets to 50%, I'm just gonna head out and then I'll charge tomorrow or something like that if I need to. But that's uh, that's probably the best one. It's only a 72 kilowatt charger, so fairly slow. And it said there was like 12 stalls, four out of order. And this one shows like 12 stalls, like six of them out of order. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's heat or what, but I will say it's 113 degrees. So uh, I had to go outside for like five minutes and it was like brutal. So I put up the uh, wind, the Evanex windshield, which I'll link to in the description below. And I have them up on the back too, cause it's just otherwise too brutal to even sit here while charging. But yeah, we'll be heading to the Scottsdale, Arizona North, Kierlin Boulevard. We're now at 50%, so it's time to take off. All right, just heading out of Wickenburg, Arizona right now. And it looks like we have about one hour to Scottsdale. All right, so as you can see, we're on a two lane highway. I am always nervous about these now. Um, good reason too, because back on January 1st of this year, let me turn the camera around. So back on January 1st of this year, uh, I was on a two lane highway like this, going about 55 miles an hour and a car, you know, at any point a car could just come over and hit you head on and you're, that's it, it's over. And so you're kind of at the mercy of other people constantly as you're passing. And that's what happened to me. And so I'm driving, I'm in uh, just south of Nashville and I'm driving and all of a sudden this car just, I guess they're turning left and I, I don't know how they couldn't see me. I mean, I could see the guy, I could look him right in the eye and he just turned right in front of me and hit me head on at, I was going 55. Luckily he wasn't moving. He was just sitting still and turning, but he literally just turned right into me. So I'm actually, this was on January 1st of this year, a few months before I got the Tesla. And that kind of just sped up the process of getting the Tesla. 
because I was gonna wait probably until maybe more into the summer, but then obviously didn't have a car, <laughs> it got totaled, and I'll show a few pictures and the video. I'll put that in the clip right now. Oh. I knew it! You stupid f***ing idiot! Emergency is a strike. Hold on, sir. This is on fire emergency. Is anyone hurt? And as you saw that, what the hell was the guy thinking? He just like, I don't know how he couldn't see me. You can hear my car beep uh, from the warning collision, uh, collision warning system, whatever. You can hear it beep and see the red light uh, from the the driver who's in front of him who turned who turned a little too late and was a little too close for comfort. And so the car even did that. And then he turns too. I have no idea what he was thinking. I imagine he wasn't thinking. I don't know if he was drunk, hung over, what. They didn't ask him any questions about that or anything. Uh, I came out pretty hot out of the car. You could probably hear in the clip, the cop uh, that was on scene when it happened. There happened to be a cop like right there at the corner when it happened and he jumped out and he tried to calm me down pretty quick because um, I was ready to go after the guy and it wasn't going to be pretty. And I thought I broke my arm, the cop thought I broke my arm, uh, they called the ambulance, all that stuff, had to get checked out, had to get x-rays, and uh, but yeah, it was just nuts. And uh, I definitely wasn't drinking or hungover or anything like that. I, in fact, I haven't drank in like two and a half years, so that wasn't an issue. And uh, yeah, it was just nuts. I just couldn't believe that that somebody would just literally just turn right into you head on. So when I see this, and I'm on a two lane highway like this, and cars are coming and they're right there, at any given point, they could just swerve over, not paying attention, want to end their life. You have no idea what they're doing. And this guy coming up right here could just swerve over and boom, that's it. Now, again, luckily the guy that hit me wasn't moving except for he was just turning. Because I can tell you with 100% certainty that if I didn't have my seatbelt on and the airbags wouldn't have all deployed, which they did, if that wouldn't have, those two things wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have made it. There's no possible way that I would have made it. I mean, you can see in the video, it's just like the guy just turns and I'm going 55 miles an hour. I barely got a chance to brake and that was it. So. Yeah, it was scary. So whenever I'm on these two lane highways now, I'm just like hugging the right shoulder, just like anxiety about, you know, going through that again. That is kind of what sped up the process of getting the Tesla Model Y. Like I had mentioned before, I was probably going to get an RV. And then I just kept looking at things and was like, you know what, I want something new, something different. I, I just want something like a whole new experience. And so I just decided that going electric and as of right now, really the only game in town is Tesla. Uh, there are some other ones coming up and I wish them all the luck and I hope that they can, they can uh, advance things even more, more competition is better for the consumer. So yeah, I just, uh, I just wanted to go with all electric and, and, and try something completely different, but that sped up the process of that happening because I was gonna, like I said, maybe wait until like more like summer to do it, but car was totaled in January. So I uh, ended up waiting a few months and then getting this. Ended up working out in the end, but yeah, it's these two lane highways are, are no joke. So always pay attention. You have no idea when your time is up and while you can't always do every. You can't always do something about that. You can minimize risk by trying to be aware of your surroundings at any given time, and because you never know when it's over, <laughs> it could be like that. And I saw my life flash before my eyes that day. I think only two other times in my life have I actually seen my life flash before my eyes. One was in the Bahamas, and I was swimming and got caught in like a riptide, and. Thank God I had just seen something. Like, honestly, it was like Baywatch or something like that. And they said to swim sideways. And without that, I was stuck for like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And I thought I was gonna, I literally thought I was gonna drown. And my girlfriend at the time was like, why'd you swim so far down? I was like, you have no idea. I almost just died. Like literally almost just died. And 
then uh, and the other time was going to a poker game late night in Huntsville, Alabama, and I end up walking up these stairs to go to a game that I had played the night before, no problem with a few friends, and end up uh, walking up the stairs and I could feel something like an alleyway as I was going up. And sure enough, it was two dudes with uh, in hoodies and had guns. Put the gun right to my head and were like, you're gonna walk up the stairs, knock on the door like you normally would. And I was like, ah, sh because not only now you never know what's going to happen. Are, you, are they just going to assassinate everybody? Are uh, are the people that are there going to think that I, that I was in on it, on the robbery and all this stuff, which a few people did, and they thought that, which was completely absurd. Um, I didn't even know anybody at the game until the night prior. And so they ended up robbing everybody, probably got around 10 grand in cash from everybody. And luckily, though, they put us all up against the wall. And I was like, oh, man, this is probably it. And luckily it wasn't. And they took the money and left. But again, those three times, you never know when it's, when it's your time. And obviously you do things, like I said, to minimize the risk, but you never know. So I'm not sure what my whole point of this story is, except for the fact that I guess you just never know when it's your time. So like I'm doing right now, living my dream, just driving around the country, camping, uh, you know, going to visit friends and enjoying nature. You know, I know right now it probably for a lot of people out there, you feel like, oh, that I just can't do that or I can't do. No, but you can make steps to get there. And I sat around and didn't do a lot of things when I should have as well. But eventually, if you just just get that little bit at the beginning to make yourself say, you know what, I'm just going to start. It's usually not as hard as you think it's going to be. Um, or even if it's hard, it's still going to be enjoyable and uh, you're still going to enjoy the process. And so, I don't know, I guess not to get too deep on this little drive out here, but I'm in the middle of nowhere in Arizona and it just made me think of that as I'm driving down this two lane highway of like, you never know when it's over. Because three times in my life, I was sure that that, I was pretty sure that that was it. But I got another chance. So why not take advantage of it? Same goes for you right now. Those things might not have happened to you, but if you're sitting around thinking about doing something or like, oh, I really wish I could do that or whatever, maybe you can't do that exact thing right now, but you can do steps to get to that point. Set up your list, whatever it is. That's what I did this last year. And trust me, I tried times before that and it didn't work. But eventually I just said, that's it. I'm just gonna do it. And once I got started, things just kept going. And now I'm just like literally having the time of my life. So I don't know, take, for, take, take something from that, what you will, but you never know when you're on your two lane highway in life and somebody's just gonna cross that middle line. So live it up now. Misty blue sky. Take me on your treasure dive I've got nothing to lose After years with the blues Alright, just getting into the greater Phoenix area. Looks like I have about 24 minutes to Scottsdale to the supercharger there. I'll probably go there and just get a little bit of a charge and then head to the hotel. Um, probably just works out best right now. I already have it in the GPS and it'll uh, just take me right there. All right, so just getting here to the supercharger in now North Scottsdale. Is on the left. It says it's right here. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> is there a 72 kilowatt, I believe? So slower, but it's all I got right now. Or there might be 150, I'll have to look. All right, yeah, so we're at the uh, North Scottsdale Kierlin Boulevard supercharger. It is 72 kilowatt max. As you can see, I'm uh, currently charging at 60. That's actually not too bad. And um, never gonna stay 55 minutes to 100%. I just, I have 44%. I'm probably five, 10 minutes from the hotel that I'm staying at. So I don't imagine that 
I'll need that much, but I'll probably just stick around until it's like at 70% or something like that. And then head to the hotel. And then tomorrow, if I need to charge up, I will, but I kind of doubt it. So I'm just gonna head over to my friend's house tomorrow, which is about five, 10 minutes away from the hotel, have a pool party tomorrow. And then that's about it for this trip. I uh, might do one more update when I get to the hotel, but otherwise, uh, wasn't too bad. I think it was, I don't know, I'm guessing probably around six hour mark or something like that with charging. So, but I will see you guys at the hotel and then keep you posted.